I'm a big fan of uh, today's soapboxer, uh, but normally the pieces of his mind I get are about 140 characters or less, so it's exciting to see him expand that uh, out to a full 20 minutes uh, today. You may uh, know Ben Pobji from his Twitter, uh, but you may also know him from New Matilda, you may know him from his TV columns in The Age, you may know him from all around the interwebs, but today he'll be talking in defence of offensiveness in comedy. Please welcome Ben Pobji. Thank you, Michael. Thank you for reminding me that I can't tweet this speech. It's got me nervous. What are we allowed to laugh at? That's a stupid question. Because we're allowed to laugh at anything, right? There's no laughter laws on the books. No one's going to arrest us for laughing at the wrong thing. So. We're free to indulge our own personal tastes. But there is always a but. Because just because nobody's going to arrest you for laughing at the wrong thing doesn't mean there will be no consequences. If you laugh at a funeral, you may be socially outcast. If you laugh at a major car crash, you may be escorted politely from the scene. If you laugh, at the mentally ill, you may be asked to leave the anti-carbon tax rally. <laughs> That's one of the things you're not supposed to laugh at. And if the Herald Sun gets hold of this, I was just using it as an example. Because <laughs> in fact, we are all constantly on guard against our own senses of humour to avoid laughing at the wrong thing, to avoid laughing at anything that might be racist or sexist or homophobic or said by Charlie Sheen. And what we're allowed to laugh at is relative to the situation. You're allowed to laugh at different things at a suburban barbecue than at a Greens Party fundraiser. You're allowed to laugh at different things at a late night stand-up club than on the floor of Parliament. But no matter where you go, there's going to be rules, unwritten rules, but very strict rules, about what you're allowed to laugh at. Which means that those of us stupid enough to try to make a living from making other people laugh have to be very careful as well, because if there are rules about what you're allowed to laugh at, the rules become more strict and the punishments more severe if you try to make people laugh at the wrong thing. And this was brought home to me very strongly in the second week of my stint as a community radio presenter last year, when whilst doing the show I received a phone call from an angry caller who began the conversation with, are you the guys who think rape is funny? Fortunately, it was community radio. and. Uh, the only sacrifice I had to make was gaining a bit more free time. But the same thing can happen to a, a comedian and they can lose their livelihood. It's a delicate tightrope to walk. The answer to the listener's question was, no, I don't find rape funny. But on the show there had just been a joke which did feature the word rape in it. Now, some people would see that in itself, reason enough to ban someone. And some people did, and so we were. But there is a distinction to be made between the question of whether jokes about a certain subject should not be made at all and whether someone who jokes about a subject is therefore stating that he or she finds that subject inherently funny. Because whenever there is an outrage over comedy in the community, <laughs> we
whenever there is an outrage over comedy in the community, whenever a comedian supposedly goes too far, the cry that goes up is, oh, so you think X is funny, X being rape, pedophilia, domestic violence, genocide, sick children, late trains, whatever. The accusation is always that the person making the joke has made the joke because they think that that subject in real life is an amusing subject. Therefore, that they would laugh at it if they saw it. So that someone making a joke about rape is supposed to be the sort of person who would laugh if they saw an actual rape or heard about it at a rape trial. Someone who makes a joke about sick children is supposed to be the sort of person who would think it would be hilarious to go and visit some sick children in a hospital, just point and laugh at them. That's the premise behind so much of the outrage when a supposedly offensive joke is made. But I'm not sure that it's a premise that stands up to a lot of intellectual scrutiny. Because do people really think that? If you see a joke on TV about a, a sensitive subject, do you assume the people who made that show think that subject is funny? If you hear a rape joke, do you really think the person thinks rape is funny? Do you think that the makers of MASH thought the Korean War was funny? Do you think the makers of Allo Allo thought that Nazis were funny? I would suggest you probably don't. You probably don't think that when writing Allo Allo, they sat down and watched some footage of concentration camps and laughed their heads off. The point is, comedy is not a matter of showing us what is funny. A comedian or a comedy writer doesn't just take an incident from real life, show it to you, say, this is funny, isn't it? That's Australia's funniest home videos. That's not comedy. Comedy isn't about showing you real life. Comedy is about showing you things that are funnier than real life, taking situations and making them funny. That's the art of the comedian. Because if we're only allowed to laugh at things that were already funny in real life, we wouldn't need comedians at all. We could just laugh at everything around us. The reason we have comedians is because life isn't funny enough and we need them to brighten it up a bit. And this doesn't just apply to offensiveness. It's probably easier to see when you remove offensiveness from the equation and consider most comedic shows, movies, stories are not inherently comedic in their plot. There's nothing inherently comedic about the Korean War, for example. But there's also nothing inherently comedic about running a hotel, or running an office, or being a psychiatrist. In fact, from experience, I'd say there's nothing particularly funny about the daily life of a stand-up comedian. The whole point is that they're funny because of the way those situations are presented. And the, uh, the cliché that it's funny because it's true is not that accurate. True things are funny sometimes, but they're rarely funny because they're true. They're usually funny because of the other cliché, which is it's the way that you tell them. Almost every comedic plot could have been a drama, or a tragedy if it was played differently. And frankly, if you start out with a plot 
that is supposedly hilarious, it's probably going to make rubbish comedy because that is what you call wacky, not funny. So we see that the comedian does not think everything he jokes about is funny in real life, necessarily, without wanting to be a mind reader. We don't make jokes about things because they're funny in real life. We make jokes about things because we thought of something funny to say about them. But even given that, the question is, why should we be offensive? There's still plenty of subjects to take on in comedy without getting into the sort of grim, dangerous territory that sparks angry talkback and furious editorials. Is there a need to offend and make comedy out of the darkest corners of life? In a literal sense, of course not. In a literal sense, there's no need to make comedy at all. There's not a need for anything in particular. We could go on, we could make jokes about only nice, polite, safe subjects. People would have their little chuckle, go on with their lives, and no one would get upset. So, why do people like me insist on being offensive? Well, there are a few reasons, I think why a comedian might be offensive. First of all, sometimes they think their subjects really are funny. Let's not deny that. There are genuinely people out there, you can tell from the t-shirts they wear, who think rape is funny. There are people who make genuinely racist jokes and genuinely misogynistic jokes and genuinely homophobic jokes. Those all happen. I'm not claiming every offensive joke is pure of heart. But we've got to make the distinction between those that are not and those that are and not assume that every joke dealing with, say, the topic of racism is a racist joke. The second reason why you might make an offensive joke is shock. And that doesn't sound like much of a defence to say, oh, I only said it because I wanted to shock you. But let me explain. Shock is a huge part of what makes comedy work. And I don't mean shock in the sense of moral outrage. I don't mean shock in the sense of uh, causing hysteria and stunning people with how depraved you can be, although that can be funny too. Shock is important to comedy purely as a, uh, a mental trigger. The shock that you get from the unexpected punchline. There are no blanket rules for comedy, but a massive part of comedy works by causing a shock to your system, to your neurons, giving you a jolt in the brain because you didn't see it coming. When a conversation takes a left turn, when someone out of the blue falls over. And if that's the case, the bigger the shock, the funnier it's going to be, the more surprised you are, the bigger the jolt to your brain the bigger that spontaneous explosion of laughter is going to be. And what that means is a comedian might make a joke, not wishing to be offensive and not even wishing to address a potentially offensive issue, but simply use a word or a phrase or a term that is as extreme as possible so that the shock in the punchline is as great as possible and the laugh as big as possible. And so I confess that a comedian could use the word rape, not because he wants to make fun of rape, not because he even wants to make a joke about rape, but because rape might be the most unexpected word 
to appear in a joke that he, he hypothetically may be making about the Prime Minister. Now, as I said, that's not going to be much of a defence to some people, saying, I only did it to shock you. But hopefully, the more thoughtful people, if they uh, have a little insight into the process of the comedic mind, well, maybe cut the comedian a little bit of slack. The last reason, of course, to be offensive is what you might call the noble reason. The reason of thought-provoking and challenging and uh, demystifying. The reason of ridiculing a dictator to reduce the fear that the people feel. Because it's a lot harder to terrify people who think you're ridiculous. It's easy to talk about a difficult subject like disease or death. If you've laughed at it first, it makes it seem less scary. And sometimes if you can make people laugh at a subject, you'll make them think about it in a different way. You may make them look at their political prejudices differently. You may make them look at their social, sexual, racial prejudices differently if you can mock the subject, if you can make them laugh before you start the conversation. And that's all very lofty and high-minded, and I'm not saying every time you're offended by a joke, stop and think how great the comedian is for tackling the subject. But it is a purpose that comedy serves. Comedy can be used as a weapon against fear, and bigotry and oppression, but in order to do that, it has to deal with sensitive issues. If you want to ridicule a dictator, you have to talk about dictators. If you want to ridicule racists, you have to talk about racism. And if you want to ridicule rapists, you have to make jokes about rape, unfortunately. So if comedy is going to serve that social purpose, it has to risk offence, because some people will be offended. Some people will be offended no matter how well-meaning and on the side of the angels the comedian is, because some people will be offended simply because they think some subjects are not fit for joking no matter what the content of the joke. And that's fine if they think that. But if you're going to be offended by a joke, you have to remember that while you have a right to be offended, you don't have a right, as John Cleese said, and I always steal his line, you don't have a right to not be offended. There's nothing that says you get to live your life without being offended by someone making a joke. Saying, I am offended, is not the same thing as saying, this is offensive. One of them is a personal view that you just can't argue with. One of them is an attempt at an objective statement that could never really be proven. And so while anyone can be offended by anything I say in an attempt to make people laugh, and I won't protest against their right to be offended, what I will say is that if you want to stop me making those jokes, either through official formal means or through the social pressure that is supposed to make people back down from joking about certain things, you better have a better reason than just, I'm offended. Because frankly, if that's all you've got, I don't really care. Thank you. Hey, Ben. Uh, Hi. Gr- great talk. Uh, just wondering if there's anything that you personally see as sacrosanct, uh, just untouchable that you won't go near? Not, not, not for other comedians, but you yourself just won't touch. Uh, me, myself. Um, there's a lot of things I haven't gone near, but this is a difficult one because I've been asked, it, you know, is there any subject you wouldn't joke about? And it kind of depends what you mean. 
whether you're talking about a broad subject area or just anything at all. Um, take uh, the most offensive thing you can think of to joke about. Um, <laughs> I'll clarify, rather than contextual, obviously, is there anything that you, ha you have thought about joking about and then have stepped away and thought, no, in the past, oh, I'm okay. not going to go there? Um, what I would steer away from is jokes about specific, specific events that have just happened. Like I was saying, I might be willing to make a joke about pedophiles. I wouldn't be willing to make a joke about a little girl who was in the news this morning for being abducted by a pedophile. Because I think there's a difference between offensive jokes and cruel jokes. And so there's, uh, there's no general subject I've ever really shied away from, but definitely you would shy away from referring to specific occurrences or specific people that are likely to just be hurtful, particularly if you consider who's going to be in your audience. I mean, that's not even just a moral issue. The fact is um, people aren't going to laugh at it. So there's, there's no reason to do it. But um, there's no real subject I've, I've ever shied away from, but there's, uh, there's specific references I have. Um, just if there's something in the news that's going to make a joke really painful for people. But I think that's a different thing from just offending people. I haven't quite thought this question out, but um, most comedians, when they start out, let's be frank, are pretty bad at it. And if you try to deal with a taboo topic, it's quite easy to be really offensive just because you haven't really honed your craft yet. Um, to what level should we um, accept that comedians will get better and, and we can see where they're coming from and give them the benefit of the doubt? Um, I don't think you should ever assume a comedian's going to get better. <laughs> Some of them don't. Um, but look, I think... I think it's true that you do have to be careful and, and, and when, you're, uh, when you're new to the game, you can be rather clumsy and you can end up seeming to make jokes that might be described as on the side of the oppressor rather than on the side of the oppressed. Um, I think if you're offended by that, that's fine. And if it's a really, really uh, offensive joke, it's, it's fine to say that. But I think, I think you should never condemn a comedian in total for one joke. So to that extent, always give him the benefit of the doubt. That doesn't mean you can't uh, go home and write on your blog, this was terrible. Um, but I think uh, always give them a chance. Don't assume that one joke means that that's going to be uh, their attitude throughout. If, if their whole act is like that, it might be a different matter. Um, at the same time, if you're offended, as I said, big deal you're offended. Um, sorry, just on the, um, the the one joke issue, like, do you think Twitter and social media has had the effect? I'm thinking of Twitter com comedy accidents that have happened recently, mm -hmm. and in fact, one joke can destroy a career. Do you yeah. think these sorts of um, technologies have actually had the impact of uh, increasing the sort of conservatism of comedy? Um, well, the thing is, if you go on Twitter, there's a lot of very non-conservative comedy, and it depends who's making it. Um, it depends what their position is. Um, if you're just a well-known stand-up comedian on Twitter, you can say pretty much anything. If you are, and you're probably thinking of this, a, uh, a weekly columnist at a major daily paper, um, you can get in trouble. And part of the reason you'll get in trouble for that is because Twitter is, is a strange in-between area that people don't quite understand yet. And so people are tweeting as if they're doing a stand-up act or as if they're just in conversation 
and they blurt things out. But other people read it as if it's a writer writing a little short story for them that they've actually thought about. And so there's a disconnect between the creator and the audience, which is troublesome. I don't think it's increased the conservatism of comedy, but I think every time something like that happens, everyone gets a little bit more nervous on Twitter. So probably Twitter itself as a conversation may be getting a little bit blander in the comedy area. G'day. Um, what do you think of the idea that it's not just one joke from one comedian, but in fact one joke plus one joke plus one joke adding to the discourse and therefore desensitising the community to a particular issue? I'd be interested in your thoughts on that, Ben. Um, and to me, it, it's very dependent on what the jokes are actually about and what the jokes are actually saying because you know as I said the 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 jokes of the people for instance who genuinely just think you know it's fun it's funny to make fun of um, violence against women or or other races or something if you get those piling up and up obviously that's going to have a, a bad could have a bad effect on attitudes, but the jokes about these subjects that address them in a different way can actually, I think, have a beneficial effect and open things up and get people talking about it more. And also, as I said, if you're on the, uh, on the side of the angels, if you're ridiculing the oppressor, that's a benefit, that's a strike. That's a strike for the good guys. So it's not the subject matter itself of the jokes, I think, that's going to have a, a good or a bad effect. It's going to be the way the jokes are told, what's actually in the jokes and, and who's telling them. I'm going to cheekily ask a question just to cap things off. Please and it, it, it's just to lead on from what you just said, it seems interesting to me that if I make a racist joke, it's OK because I know I'm not a racist. I know I'm doing it ironically or I'm doing it to highlight racism or whatever. If the end result is the same, that someone feels uh, that I'm perpetuating a stereotype, then isn't that offence taken legitimately, even if my motivation wasn't that? Um, <laughs> well, that's tricky, because there are some jokes that are definitely racist jokes, and there are some jokes that are definitely anti-racist jokes, and there's a whole area in between that Different people will see differently, and as I said, some people will see that a joke about racism is offensive in itself, no matter what, what attitude you're taking. Um, I wouldn't ever say offence you took is illegitimate, but as I said, offence in itself is not a reason to actually uh, do anything or, or a reason for a comedian to stop making the jokes. The trouble with saying, oh, if it offends someone, you should stop no matter what the joke was because, you know, be nice to people. The trouble with that is people can get offended over anything. If you're going to rule out offensive subjects, you rule out practically any subject because you can say, OK, I won't make jokes about rape, racism, sexism, domestic violence, war, murder. So you make a joke about your car and someone in the audience just lost their son in a car crash that morning. You make a jo joke about your dog and you've got someone whose kid was mauled by a dog. You make a joke about your girlfriend, someone's girlfriend is in, in the cancer ward. You can't, you can't guarantee you're not going to upset anyone. So you can't just go by, they were offended, and so I have to pull that from my repertoire, no matter what I was thinking when I wrote it, and no matter what I'm trying to do with it. You, you do have to... If everyone... If millions of people are marching on your house wanting to kill you, then you reconsider. <laughs> you know. Um, but basically, I mean, most comedians, in the end, they're just, they're just trying to find something that's funny. Um, and if they've found something that's funny, you can't be guided by someone coming up to you and saying, that upset me. Because if 50 people were laughing at it, what are you going to do? You want to get another gig. 
Please join me in thanking Ben Popji. Thank you.